silence to kick off the real show, and then uh, we'll 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 get into it. Okay. Well, hey everybody, <laughs> welcome to the Undead Lab stream. Hello. Uh, it's uh, we, there's several of us here right now. Uh, let's see, we got our special guest Travis McLean. Hey everyone. Woo, Travis. Uh, you see, he was actually the star of IGN's video that they just uh, released yeah. today. I don't know if I'd say star, but it was fun to get to play with everyone. <laughs> and then uh, we got me here. I'm Jeffrey Card. And then uh, hiding in the back there, we've got Wanda Russell. Uh, she's she's just sort of listening in to, to make you know to make sure we don't say anything too <laughs> embarrassing. Um, but she can't hear me, which makes it so much easier to say things that are too embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So Wonder can't hear Nicole at all, because uh, our audio is kind of messed up in here. That's why Travis and I have these really stylish headphones on. Um, and then, of course, we've got Nicole Hamlet via Skype, uh, helping us, uh, you know, talk to folks in the chat. And uh, how are you all doing? Uh, we'll let you answer that in 30 seconds when it updates. Uh, <laughs> uh, so... It's an exciting day because uh, IGN just released their first 25-minute gameplay video. Oh my uh, gosh, so amazing. They, it's so, yeah, it's such a, I mean, compared to the nothing we were able to share before, getting 25 minutes of solid gameplay was kind of ridiculous. And um, so, so, but they uh, they recorded that actually a little while ago. They came out here. Right? Yeah. yeah. And they were yeah. in the office for a couple days. It was great getting to meet them and play with them. Yeah, so I uh, I was you know working hard on bugs, but uh, Travis was actually one of their uh, one of their guides to the game, and so uh, all of that video that you guys saw, in fact, a bunch of times Travis's name was up on the screen as the person yeah. who was playing, uh, and so what we thought we would do is play through the through IGN's video with you guys and uh, answer your questions, and you know, let Travis kind of fill us in a little bit of what was going on, giving some context to what you're saying. Yeah, definitely. And hopefully that'll be fun. Um, and uh, folks, oh yeah, well you go. Oh, no, you go for it, uh, Nicole. Uh, Cerebral Amesis wanted to know what kind of tax tactics we uh, employed to keep everything such a secret. <laughs> what kinds of tactics? Uh, just just, just absolute fear, I think. Of, fear, uh, yeah. Uh, social anxiety about doing something wrong in front of all of our friends. Terrifying <laughs> fear tactics is what kept us so quiet. Uh, yeah, yep. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got a lot of folks in the chat who've been uh, congratulating us uh, about the uh, the positive reception that the game's been getting. You know that that like like when uh, Jeff Strain posted in Slack this morning, like posted the uh, uh, the IGN video for us to look at. He actually posted the first several comments too because they were all positive. He's like, as a universal, as a general rule, don't read the comments. <laughs> right. But they're actually good, so read them. This time they were so good. I haven't run across a negative comment yet, and that is not a challenge. But um, <laughs> but in in uh, in this line of business, uh, social media, you guys you guys all know that uh, it is it is very it's not for the faint of heart, and everything has come back so positive, which just completely ramps up our excitement, right? Because you know we're doing this for you guys, and so if you're excited, we're uh, excited. Vanilla is asking uh, whether or not or when we're going to have a merch store. Uh, do, you, do, you, do we have any information on that, Nicole, or is that uh, still kind of in the wind? We, so we do have information on that. It's probably not going to happen until after, um, after launch. Uh, there, so we, there were some licensing issues with uh, the vendor who was running our store before. Hmm. And so they changed out vendors, and uh, they've been trying to get everything set up. But it's you know with anything licensing uh, and and legal wise it's it's generally quite difficult in a slow moving process. So uh, Wonder will definitely have more information about that soon because we are definitely pressing for a merch store. But I would not expect to see it until after lunch. Well, that makes sense. Wonder just snuck out, so uh, maybe she's running off to get more information. <laughs> or she's like, "Holy crap, Nicole is talking, and I need to get a head pair of headphones." <laughs> Actually, that's probably the case. That's probably uh, totally the case. <laughs> so, right. um, so yes. Um, but with that said, I know that you guys are. Um, I know that you guys really want, um, you know, custom stuff, and uh, I can tell you that we are working on it. Well, hey, uh, oh yeah, so um, Full Fury says that uh, the merch store needs a Pizza Cat shirt uh, <laughs> to, to go with the, uh, the one, of, one of the pre-order bonus cars that's got Pizza Cat on it. I do love that pre-order That Pizza bonus. Cat is 
everything. Yeah, I love the brands that uh, the artists have created for uh, for our game. Because one of one of my jobs was actually driving through the world and identifying like all of the buildings that that the artists had decked out with unique signage and yep. uh, kind of weird in jokes and stuff like that. And I my one of my jobs was writing the names of all of the buildings so they could be identified on the map. And uh, and so, so finding some of the some of the things that they that they had done, you know, noticing some of the details of the buildings was actually one of the funnest parts of my job. So there's a lot to explore. Uh, in we this have world. the best brands. We do have the best brands and the best Easter eggs and the best like we have the best everything. I'm not gonna lie, everything is the best. So uh, we're about we're about to watch the video and uh, we're gonna basically. Our plan is to answer questions about the video itself and the, the kinds of things that you see in the video. Uh, they do a lot of combat. They do some co-op stuff. Uh, they uh, mess with the emote system. They fight uh, plague hearts and blood plague zombies. Ooh, so excited. So there's a lot of stuff about that to answer. Um, there are future videos coming out from IGN uh, about things like character creation and base building and you know, and a lot of the other systems in the game. And so we're probably going to hold off on, on answering questions about those until we've got the video to work with so we can actually you know look at the things together and, and talk about them except let's let's point out it's not actually character creation oh did i say creation well you did. character character stuff anyway uh so i think it was character creation because part of my job is making all the stuff for the characters so right. for me it's character creation for you guys it's character discovery. characters you guys get to play them it's but but, totally. but it is like character development, you know, because I mean, you start with a character yeah. who they begin in a certain way, and then you do get to make a lot of choices along the way. But we'll we'll leave we'll leave the details of that to uh, to when IGN gets to it. Exactly. So uh, well, let's let's get this video up and running. Uh, once I go full screen on this video, I suddenly get really dark and scary. Uh, <laughs> but but Tra Travis is on the well lit side. Of, I gave him the well lit side of the couch because uh, you know uh, I'm here all the time. You guys have seen way way too much of my face anyway. Right. Uh, and but, also because Travis did those bomb ass moves, <laughs> yes, and he did. so he should be celebrated. Dude, yeah, the community's awesome. Like you were sending some of those gifts out. They're pretty badass. <laughs> yeah, they really are. They really are. Okay, so let's uh, let's have a look at this video. So um, I think the the voices, uh, IGN's voices in this video are going to be much quieter than ours. Um, and oh, man, I, the way things are working on my screen here, I've actually limited access to the uh, play button. Here we go. Here we go. So uh, yeah, so they're going to start talking at some point, but I'm pretty sure we're louder than them. Let us know if you can't hear anything though. So uh, some questions that I got in Discord before we started were uh, people were like, oh, are these the backpacks for the characters? Are these backpacks that you see in game? And some of them are small and some of them are big, but they just like the old games, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. Um, some of the characters, definitely uh, Fogey, uh, Brandon and Ryan had the big backpacks. Um, you can see me off on the right there. I had a smaller backpack going into this. Um, they were definitely helping me out with some good gear, but they definitely are different sizes. Yeah, and uh, Brian put a lot of work into trying to balance the backpack so that there were good reasons to have either a large one or a small one. Because, of course, the large one lets you carry more stuff, which is great. But if your character's um, you know, uh, personal weight limit because of their personal strength isn't that high and you can't really carry that much stuff anyway, having a big backpack might be a waste. And you might want to go for a smaller backpack that maybe gives you an advantage for you know, uh, being, being quicker and uh, being able to last longer in combat. Great. It's all about the the weight the weight management and uh, versus your stamina, right? Uh, yeah, pretty yeah, pretty much. Like the, I think if you're if you're carrying way too much and you're overloaded, then you lose stamina much faster. All the things that take your stamina take more of it. Uh, yep. and, oh, okay, we got so the 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 chicken the green hoodie that is Travis. Yes. Um, and so you can see him. He he's much more familiar with the combat system than a lot of the other players uh, in this video. And so you'll see him pull up some pull off some of the more badass moves in the game. Oh, so good. Like that throw over the shoulder every time I cheer. Every time. Yeah, it's super oh. awesome. I love using that move. It's real good, especially against screamers, just getting to interrupt that scream. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It's like, you think you're doing your super attack? Well, boom! <laughs> <laughs> um, see here, we had a question. Uh, uh, Kia noticed that there are smaller melee weapons like screwdrivers and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, so... Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, yeah so uh, every character has uh, a small weapon that they always have with them um, that they can use. It has limited reach, um, but it doesn't break. You can bring bigger melee weapons, kind of like the sword I'm rocking, that have better reach, better lethality, um, but they'll break over time. So usually you want to have the melee weapon, but if it breaks, you got your backup. 
Yeah, 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 that makes sense. So, so, so you, you definitely want to bring a big melee weapon into combat, but you're never left completely unarmed. Yeah. And, and actually, you can even kind of, uh, once they get into character development, we can talk about how you can sort of specialize uh, to be good, particularly good with certain types of weapons. Um, so, Gooniverse is asking a specific question about uh, how many blood plague samples are needed to, to create the cure. Uh, uh, for the blood I feel plague. like that's spoilery, right? Yeah, so it is spoilery, and it also it's the kind of thing that we might still tune a little bit over time, and so I don't think we should make any promises about that. But we should maybe set up a little bit like what the blood plague is, because you get exposed yes. to it in the video, but it's never really fully explained how, kind of how it works. Do you, do you want to go into that a little bit? Um... I mean, you might be more familiar, kind of. Okay, with I, yeah, I can do it. You should see that. Okay, oh, it was. It just went by. Did you see the meter um, that was right above the mini map? Keep your eye on the mini map. Uh, and there's and when we switch to some of the perspectives, there's a meter over it. Uh, that one right there. Uh, it's filling up towards a little. Uh, looks like a little temperature gauge, a little thermometer. Um, what that is is every time you're attacked by a blood plague infected zombie or a plague zombie is what we usually call them. When you're attacked by a plague zombie, that bar fills up. And if you get enough exposure to the blood plague um, and it fills all the way up, your character becomes infected. Um, then that bar gets swapped out. You'll see later on that bar will get swapped out for what is essentially a timer until your death. Uh, so you'll have a new bar in that spot that's basically ticking towards your ultimate death, and that character is going to die and, be, and just transform straight into a blood plague zombie themselves unless uh, you can get them the cure. And so it's interesting because in, you know, in, in our zombie world of State of Decay, you know, we, we don't have this, this question of, you know, uh, at least historically we haven't had this question of who's infected and who's not. You know? Everyone, when they die, is going to become a zombie, like Walking Dead rules. Um, but we still wanted to, to bring in that classic element of zombie lore, which was, you know, someone's infected, oh no, what are we going to do about it? Um, and because we had sort of sidestepped that originally with sort of the lore of State of Decay, we, we decided to bring in this new element, which is this deadly, virulent version of the zombie plague that, uh, that, that can infect your characters and inevitably is going to kill them and turn them into a deadly, dangerous zombie unless you do something about it. Um, and so you got a couple of options. Uh, you've seen here, you know, you, you, uh, as they're killing blood plague zombies, uh, they're collecting these items called plague samples uh, that you can turn into a cure for the plague if you've got a, a base that can, that can handle it. Um, but if you can't get that, uh, you also have the option to um, execute your friends. Uh, to euthanize them is, is probably a more uh, accurate term. So. Mercy shots. Yeah, mercy shots, exactly. So yep. you can do that when you need to uh, to prevent them from, you know, turning into a zombie and murdering the rest of their friends. Uh, you can, yeah, you can take them out. So we have a couple of questions um, yeah. that are related directly to what these guys are seeing right now on the screen. Should I back and, it up at all to, to catch things that um, we uh, missed actually, while I was uh, talking? Actually, just talking? let's pause it just for a second. Like right here is a good spot to pause it. Just pause it right there on the message later that day? No, no, not later that day. You know what? I was watching the stream. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's pause you it right know here. that thirty second delay. So uh, one of the things that they asked is those uh, colors, the colors uh, over their heads. Oh uh, right, yeah. Do those have any significance, or is it just an indicator that they're in your group? So do you want to talk about that? Like, yeah. What it means? So um, basically, you can see uh, everyone has an icon over their head. The color kind of represents what player they are. So you can have players two, three, and four, and one in the multiplayer. Um, and if you look at the mini-map too, you'll see little arrows for waypoints that match up to those colors, so you can see which player is marking different spots on the map and stuff like that. Um, but those indications basically just show that they are with you in a multiplayer fashion. Uh, and friendly fire is another big question. Uh, is it on or is it off? It, it is off. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, basically... Um, you know, we wanted players to, to, to come into this game with the sense that, you know, that you're here to work together. You know, you're a team. You're trying to help, uh, help you know, your, your, your group survive. And uh, we didn't want to get into that weird case where, you know, we're kind of, like, we wanted to really encourage people to play, uh, to play with, you know, to feel comfortable playing with each other in multiplayer, even to play with strangers. Because, uh, you know, we've got this whole flare system where you, you can shoot up a flare and uh, summon a stranger into your game to, to help you out. And I, you know, we felt like it was going to work a lot better. People would be, be more likely to want to play together and collaborate 
if they weren't constantly in danger of just getting trolled by random people and, and right. their, but because your characters are very precious. Once you lose a character, they're irreplaceable. You'll never get that exact same character back probably. again. You don't need somebody griefing you like that. Yeah, no, exactly. So there's still plenty of you know bad decisions your friends can make that make that can lead <laughs> to your death. Um, like for instance, they throw a bunch of firecrackers at you or something like that. There's still ways for people to kind of make mistakes and get in each other's way, but. You know, eat both the experience of having someone just come up and shotgun you in the back of the head and the experience of a friend accidentally shotgunning you in the head when they were trying to save you, they were both going to be really bad experiences for a lot of people. Right. So we kind of backed away from that. Uh, what about the HUD? Can uh, people, are people going to be able to move those elements around? Like, for instance, can they turn off the tooltips? Um, oh, the question about turning off the tooltips, uh, yes, there is definitely an option to turn off those uh, tutorial messages that you're seeing. We, we left them on uh, because, you know, the, the IGN guys were brand new to the game. We wanted to make right, sure they had absolutely. all the direction they could have. But, yeah, those there's actually a whole elaborate system for deciding how often those appear, how they sort of taper off over time. So you get a bunch of them early on, but as you've seen them and responded to them, you stop seeing them anymore. Um, and then, But if you, if you just want to play without them altogether, there is an option in the settings menu uh, to do that. Sweet. Yep. Uh, oh, uh, so uh, we have a lot of multiplayer questions, and yes. I know that IGN is going to specifically do a multiplayer. Um, I think that specifically a multiplayer video. So those are things that we'll definitely be able to talk Ooh. about later. Excuse me, sorry. That's <laughs> totally okay. I'm like, I do the same thing. I stop, and I'm like, oh. Yeah. Um, I, just, I remembered that from the last time I watched the video, and I was like, oh, I can't <laughs> wait to see this explosion, exploding head. So yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, you think the biggest thing that uh, the biggest thing that I saw that caused the most of my excitement is when one of the players dies and turns into a zombie. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. So it's coming up. It's, yeah, yeah, it's so coming I, up. I'd forgotten soon. where that happened. So if you'd see it yeah. coming, interrupt me what, whatever I'm in the middle of, so we can see it. <laughs> yeah, that's like that's really exciting. Okay. I just thought about that because it's coming up pretty soon. Uh, um, no I, offline simulation, Dell. None at all. Yeah, no offline simulation. So if you leave, when you leave the game and you come back. Uh, the, not everything is necessarily going to be exactly the same because uh, we have to kind of recreate it all and, and a lot of it is procedurally generated so it's not like you quit and then the zombie that was in the middle of attacking you is still in the middle of attacking you it's not that right. precise but we don't simulate a bunch of like events happening while you're gone like missing survivors that you know you'll never see again because you decided to take a week's vacation <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, Takuro Spirit noticed that there's a snow plow on the front of one of the trucks uh, yeah that thing's super fun to mess around with. Just driving <laughs> around through zombies, it's pretty great. Just splattering it everywhere. Yeah. Um, so somebody asked, do you get to choose the loadout of your character? Uh, Garlic Burp is asking this, uh, when you're going into a different person's game. Uh, yeah, so you're bringing one of the characters from your single-player game into their single-player game. So whatever, however you kitted out your character um, when, you know, when they were uh, running around in your game... That that kit follows you into the multiplayer game, and I think and I think you have access to your own equipment, right? Is that yeah? If we go back to like if a couple points when we're recording, we go back to my base and like you can go to the supply locker and pick up stuff from your thing. Yeah. So so basically, you so you don't have access to your friend's supply locker. You can't just steal all of their stuff. Mm -hmm. You got access to your supply locker in their base, uh, and so you so if you've got a bunch of like like you've been you know making C four. Uh, you know, for a while, you get to not just bring in your characters and your expertise as a player, you get to bring in all of the equipment that you've been building up uh, in your game. And if you want to donate some of your stuff to the cause, you totally can. Mm -hmm. Right. But inconsequently, when you loot in your player's map, so like if, say that, you know, you're here and you, you find something and you put that in your lo your locker, mm -hmm. not not theirs. Um, and so, a uh, prophecy and filthy Phil are both asking about: uh, Can you repair stuff? Can you repair vehicles that uh, have taken a bunch of damage? Can you repair favorite weapons once they've taken a bunch of damage? And uh, yeah, the answer to that is yes. Uh, I think that when we get into the base building uh, questions, uh, which is I think can't a later, answer those yet. A later IGM thing, we can we can probably talk about the exact process. But yeah, repairs. You see things taking damage uh, while you're watching the video, and yeah, that's it's not inevitable that it's going to go away. Though you know, it, it costs something. So yeah, so Blade of Meat Shield disappointed that he can't steal from the other person's supply. Oh, <laughs> is anybody surprised here? Nobody's surprised. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, we had a question earlier, uh, and somebody asked if they could play this as a single player instead of a multi, or rather than multiplayer. Absolutely, yes. Oh yeah, totally. Uh, this is a single player game that you can play with your friends if you want to. 
So yeah, it's, exactly. I mean, and, and I usually fun. I usually play uh, single player. That's one reason why yeah. it's really good to have Travis here because he actually has played more multiplayer of this game than I have. Because uh, I've been very focused on a lot of the single player stuff. And while we've all played multiplayer around here, it's like we all have kind of different levels, you know. Yeah. And for me, like I, I I probably as a player would play this much more as a single player game. Whereas I know lots of people at the studio think of this primarily as a co op game that they would play with their friends. I'm I'm the same way. I'm kind of a control freak, and so I don't want people <laughs> I don't want people messing with my strategy. So uh, I like I would definitely I would definitely be able to play this. You have to be careful though, right? Uh, this isn't uh, you're not going to go in there shooting them up and you know causing a whole lot of ruckus and get out of it alive. <laughs> you actually have to use tactics. It's it's you know there's a challenge to it. Uh, it's probably a little bit easier playing multiplayer because you've got somebody who's watching your back, but. Definitely, definitely. Uh, I played single player. Zombie Lord uh, nineteen is asking um, if if you can cross play between Xbox and PC. And yes, you can. Like the the um, the Xbox One and Windows ten version of the game um, let, allows you to uh, to play between PCs and Xboxes. So you can be playing it on PC um, uh, on you know the Windows ten platform, and a friend of yours can be playing it uh, on the Xbox, and you can totally play together. Yep. Woo! How exciting. Because you know our 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 community has has historically been split pretty pretty right much down the middle, and not being able to play with play together would have been kind of sad. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. So this is this is cool, cool stuff. Uh, Mercenary Man had a question about how looting works in multiplayer. Um, that and and I could probably talk about, it, but you might understand it a little better than I do. Uh, uh, yeah, if you want to go, I can fill in. Okay, sure. Uh, so basically. Um, you know, when you open, when, when you bust into a, a building like we have here, uh, each of you can see the containers uh, that you can loot, and, and the containers are kind of distributed amongst your friends. So when there's more people in a game, there are more containers to loot, and sort of it, it sort of simulates the idea of multiple people coming into a room and sort of noticing different things. And so you all can, if you want to get the most out of a building, you all kind of need to share and collaborate to to sort of find everything you can. And then um, you know you can drop stuff and you can share stuff. Uh, but but ultimately, yeah, it's 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 kind of it's distributed across uh, different people. So there's kind of some like there's a, a good reason to bring friends with you scavenging because you can you know you can discover more together uh, than you could just flying solo. You know what? I just answered a question, and I think I might have I think I might have answered it wrong, but I don't think I did. Uh, Doctor Poems wanted to know if uh, the monitor, uh, the blood plague monitor that you get. If it goes away after you rest, and I, I think you need to, you need to medicine for that to go away. So it depends on which one he means. So the, the so the the thing we see on the screen right now, oh, mm -hmm. that just went away. Uh, that, the that one temperature. That, okay, so this is one down here. That's the one where you're dying. Uh, right. The 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 meter you see down there. The one where you're dying, that does not go away unless you get the cure. In fact, that's going to get worse and worse and worse over time. You can see the little clock up there, you know, that is like yep. he's got a couple hours. Right now, there's actually a bug right there where it's not updating in real time. It's supposed to be. Um, and so, you know, by the way, we should mention that this is uh, what you're seeing right now. It's still a work in progress. We are still working very hard, polishing and uh, continuing to develop this game uh, before its release. And so right. things like the fact that uh, that the meter to your death is not filling up. That's just a bug. But anyway, right. so what you would see down there at the bottom uh, would be, you know, that character, uh, that meter progressing steadily towards death. Uh, and you need to get the cure uh, to stop that from happening. Otherwise, the character will die. But before you get to that point, when you're just when you just have the white meter that's filling towards the little thermometer, that just means that you're kind of getting covered in this virus and it's gross and you have a good chance of getting infected, but you have not been infected yet. And if you go home and you rest, that will go away. And uh, and you and you know you next time you take the character out, they'll probably have a lot less of it if if they have any at all. That's the problem with watching the stream. And the at, like the we, because we've got those two icons. I'm like I'm looking at the one with the death, and I'm like, no, that doesn't go away. You need to you need to take medicine for that. You're gonna die. You should probably run. <laughs> yeah. Um, just to jump back to oh, multiplayer yeah. looting real fast. Um, one thing you might notice uh, when we're going through buildings and stuff, some of the containers will be colored. Um, the containers match up with your player color. So if you see a container glowing orange, that's for the orange player. Yellow, it's for yellow player, etc. Okay, oh, that makes a lot of sense. So you can actually tell your friend, hey, I found something for you in here. Yeah. 
and and yeah, it's not kind of relying on everybody sort of having different information. Mm, trying to encourage that communication aspect. Yeah, and then you've got you can see uh, whenever you see them open the big map too. You see a similar thing where uh, uh, each each character's got their own waypoint. So so you know when you're playing single player, you can place a waypoint out there to help direct yourself on the map. But when you're multiplayer, all four of you can place waypoints, and each of you can place your own waypoint. So you can mark a point on the map. Say, hey guys, you see this spot that I've marked? Let's go here. Uh, or something like that, and you can communicate better than you could, you know, just trying to describe things and wave your hands at each other. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it, it's a Lord idea. wants to know if we limited the map size that could be displayed in the IGN gameplay, because he says that it looks smaller than he expected. Um, I am telling you that that map is huge. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard to tell, because especially because the icons will scale uh, differently as you're zooming in right. and out. It's hard to, to really tell how large the map is just from looking at the map uh, on the screen, but that, that map is is very large. It is and, a very, yeah. very large map. And it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's roughly oh. comparable to the map from the original game. I, I, you know what? I felt like it was bigger, uh, and I know that people keep telling me that it's not, but, um, <laughs> but I refuse to believe them, even though they built the game, uh, because it feels way, way bigger to me. I remember driving across it going, oh my god, I'm where where the heck am I and how long does this thing go on because wow this is huge yeah so I, uh, yeah. Uh, there isn't scale right like the old maps that you're used to in state of decay one are all bound by the uh, by the Bronto gas and this one is way more scalable so it's just you're not gonna get an accurate uh, read on how big it is until you're in the game. Yeah, and there's uh, and there's also something I think that the 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 features of the map are kind of distributed a little differently in the sequel than mm -hmm. they were in the original game. Yep, in the original game, you are. had these tight clusters with long, empty uh, roads to traverse in between them, and so it, it so it felt like you know it felt like physically large, but but uh, but there wasn't as much to do in a lot of areas. Um, the the explorable sites are actually more evenly distributed across these maps, and so um, even though the map is approximately the same size, there's actually kind of more to do along the way, and there's yes. more stuff to look at and more Definitely. to slow you down. Um, and so it kind of it, it, I think that might be one of the reasons why they get, the maps can can kind of feel a little bit bigger. Yeah, it's yeah, it's definitely it's a it's a huge it's a huge map. Don't don't let the size of the map fool you, buddy. So let's see here. Oh, Hendo asked the question about the timeline, like wh when the game takes place, uh, uh, compared to the original game. And, and Fogi answered this question yesterday, uh, and it was uh, basically 15 months. So um, in the original game, uh, the outbreak had happened within the previous two weeks, and everyone was still like, what's a zombie? And they were all, you know, <laughs> kind of really confused about stuff. This is a world where everyone understands what has happened. Like, like they've been living with this for over a year, and they've accepted the new normal, and now the question is, what are they going to do about it? Uh, Kia asks, uh, will we get any gameplay in different maps? Uh, so I wasn't there for their playthrough. Did they, did they basically spend most of their time in the same map? I actually only did multiplayer through with them, so I only know kind of what we recorded. What we did there? This. Okay, so I'm not actually sure what uh, IGN has uh, in store for us, but that's, that's a really good question. I, I hope they get to, that they show, I mean, we definitely, all three of our maps are, you know, ready Amazing. to show and in good condition, yeah. so. Uh, so good. I'd be surprised if we didn't, if we didn't show them all. I know we were playing on different accounts. And stuff, so I'm gonna give it a decent likelihood. <laughs> There's probably other maps. Yeah. Yep. Cool. There is. Uh, there is one. Like that. That's one of the hardest things for me to to decide which map is my favorite one. Uh, yeah. Because they're all so good. They're yeah, all they so well done. Yeah, they each kind of have their own their own thing that makes it, it yep. makes me really like them. Kind of their own flavor, right? And little little details that just make them each special and unique. I I can't wait to show those off. Um. So there was a question about, uh, actually, let's see here. We've, we've gotten a lot of question about um, uh, Breakdown, because uh, I know that a lot of folks, uh, you know, Breakdown is, is probably our most um, replayable version of the original game. Uh, it's, it was the first DLC that we came out with, and um, a lot of folks that are still playing State of Decay Day are, today are mostly playing Breakdown. And so we get a lot of questions about, you know, well, is there going to be a breakdown for the sequel? Um, and so, so right now we're not actually announcing um, any details about any future DLCs or anything like that. But uh, the thing that I've been saying is that you know, because 
because Breakdown was such a popular version of our, of the original game, we actually looked to Breakdown a lot for inspiration for uh, how to build the sequel. Um, and so things like you know just how long you can play, how you can just sort of you know move from map to map and extend your gameplay for a long period of time and build up a community uh, over the long haul. Um, you know, that that whole experience is very inspired by Breakdown, and that's and you know the the sequel works in ways that, that are very Breakdown inspired. Now uh, there there are some you know aspects of Breakdown, things like the the kind of arcadey you know uh, chasing challenges to unlock heroes and that kind of thing. That feature uh, isn't in the core game, but a lot of what uh, what we loved about Breakdown, what we know that uh, fans of the game loved about Breakdown, are already in the sequel and and wouldn't need DLC uh, to, uh, to to come in. So Zombie Lord had a really good question. Uh, they asked if the play carts were going to be replacing the infestations, or will we have both? And uh, I know that I've played both. <laughs> yeah, um, actually through this playthrough, uh, we do clear out both things. Um, like there are a few infestations you'll see on the map that we go through and clear out, and then currently we're fighting a play cart, so both are still in. So we should talk a little bit about play carts too, because uh, like what what does it take to fight a play cart? For, first first off. We should probably say, what are plague hearts? <laughs> because we talked about how the blood plague works, but these plague hearts are basically, you know, those blood plague zombies that, that provide... That, that the concentrated inf- evil. That, like, afflict you with this, with this disease. They gather in areas around plague hearts. And so if you destroy a plague heart, you'll stop plague zombies from spawning in that area, and you'll make it much safer. Uh, but the experience of actually fighting one of these plague hearts, I mean, t- like, tell them, like, right now, uh, what, uh, what Fogey's doing, just... Hitting it with a hammer, is that the most effective way to... uh... not the most effective way to do it. (laughs) Definitely (laughs) not. Like, for multiplayer, this is one of the big strengths of it. Like, bringing friends with you, kind of, if you can, organizing it. Uh, Having lots of explosives is good, fires is good. Uh, Noise distractors are always really good. Oh, draw the zombies off so you can focus Mm -hmm. on the plague heart? Oh my gosh, it's just like a way... It it is pure, unadulterated evil. I rage quit (laughs) so hard. The first time I did a play cart that uh, I actually ended up crying like a little girl. I was like, this is the worst, most horrible thing I've ever done in my life. It was so hard. It was so hard. Um, I should not have admitted to that because people are going to make fun of me forever. But it was like the it was you literally have to think about what you're doing. And and there are tactics because not only do you have to kill that play cart, but you have waves of zombies incoming at you. So, (laughs) yeah. And, and we've gotten a lot of questions uh, in here about whether difficulty scales when you bring other players in. Um, and that's, that's not how our difficulty works. Basically, our, what our difficulty scales as your community gains experience, as your community develops. Um, and it scales pretty hard. So, like, the first Plague Heart you fight might not actually feel that challenging. But once you've gotten to, you know, when you've gotten several Plague Hearts in and your community is advanced and you've gained a lot of experience from all these things you're doing, they get much harder over time. And... Um, you know, bringing friends into the game is actually one of the ways that uh, you can sort of mitigate how hard the game gets as you progress. Um, and so we kind of wanted that, it wanted it to work that way. That idea that you know, bringing friends into the game is a way not to make the game harder, but is a way to manage the difficulty that's going to be happening right. on its own. Right. Exactly. Because it, it's it's this isn't a cakewalk. Not yeah. at all. And if you bring in the wrong friends, they will make the game much harder uh, <laughs> by just ruining everything. <laughs> So Takuro Spirit said that uh, all of those wrecked cars that you pass on the on the road are for me playtesting the game, just leaving them there. <laughs> How did you know? That's exactly the truth. Yeah. So um, MK180 uh, Gaming asked, uh, "Will you still be? Will you be able to kill your partner if they are infected?" And uh, yeah, that is one of the solutions uh, that you can that you can come up. With. Let me back this video up. Let's start it over at the beginning because I'm sure we've missed a bunch of stuff we could have talked about. Oh my gosh, we have. Um, but yeah, you've got uh, what that is one. Is you can cure someone. You can put them in the infirmary to try to slow down the disease, um, or you can just shoot them in the head, uh, and that's that is always an option. Yep, you're gonna have to explain to them afterwards why you shot them in the head instead of putting them in the infirmary. This game might test out some friendships, like hardcore. Um, Viper Ho asks, can the co-op friends play the host characters? No. If you're playing co-op, you're bringing in people from your own community. The idea being that 
everyone in this game, you know, everyone experience should have skin in the game. You know, you shouldn't have like one character who cares about what happens, but all the other characters just like, oh, whatever, I'm playing somebody else's guy, so I don't care what happens. Like everybody who plays this game has got something important to them that they could lose if things go wrong, and it kind of gets everyone on the same page to, you know, like you're bringing somebody that you built up in your game into your friend's game. You're not just going to be there to mess around. Right. Let's see here. Uh, so, uh, Dell asks, if you turn zombie, do you die straight away, or can you have fun chasing your co-op buddies? Um, well, one of the problems of being a zombie is you don't have any free will anymore. Um, and so, I think you can sometimes witness your your zombie self going after your friends uh, as you're still sort of deciding how you want to respond. Uh, but you don't uh, you you don't just control the zombie and attack your friends because that would kind of go towards like the you know the griefing thing that we were trying to avoid. Right, the griefing and trolling, yeah. Although, listen, there you I, you know you've got friends that you, that would be really fun with. That would be really fun. Oh no, I'm a zombie now. Run. <laughs> so this area is also a pretty good example of what we were talking about earlier with mm -hmm. the different icons and stuff that you see oh, in the yeah. boxes. Uh, so it was just kind of nice. Like you can see my character because this is my game. I grab the materials and stuff for later, uh, while other people grab some parts for building and stuff. Yeah. And I think over time, you really get used to, you know, which character has got which color. And so you, you start to just really kind of instinctively know, you know, the waypoints and the boxes and, the, you know, like you associate that color uh, with that person or with or the number of pips, you know, with that with that person. And Here's a relevant question from Datitude. If you're not playing with a full complement of four players, can AI controlled characters be brought along to help out? Uh, yeah, we do have a follower system like the original game had. Uh, so if you're playing single player, then you can recruit, recruit people from your own community to come along as, as, as AI companions. Or some missions uh, will also give you uh, AI companions during the... Oh, oh, ah, plague zombie. Um, they'll give you AI companions uh, that, you can, that you can play with. Um, so it's, it's a lot like the original game that way. So, so you're not you know, completely on your own if, you, uh, if, if you're not playing with friends. So what is that that they just set off? So they just set off a bunch of fireworks. And if you're looking for strategies for taking out play cards, what about is about to happen is real good. Set off a noise detractor advice, throw some fire, kill a bunch of zombies real fast. <laughs> look at those fire effects. Those are sexy. Yeah, yeah, they look real good. At some point, we should we should do a stream, uh, once, well, especially once we can play the game, uh, do a stream with like uh, Jeff Solt and, and Gronk to just go through like all of the explosions yeah. and, and how they work. so good. Definitely got to show off a lot of that in this playthrough, which I was real happy about. <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that what you and Fogey's big backpacks are for? Just like to hold as many grenades Basically, as you possibly we can? We stacked <laughs> everyone up with some good combat uh, consumables. Uh, also, for Death Hour, uh, grenades can affect your location and stuff, but it won't do friendly fire damage. So, yeah. And then um, you notice, by the way, that uh, you've. You look, You found this ambulance on the road, and you looked in the trunk, and there was a bunch of stuff in the trunk. Yeah, Fogey uh, was hurting a little bit, saw an ambulance, went to it, and was able to heal back up to full, which was really nice, um, which was just kind of something that randomly happened, which was <laughs> really useful for him, because I don't think he brought healing stuff. <laughs> he just way too decision. many. His pockets were already full of Molotov cocktails. Like, there's no room <laughs> for bandages. Yeah. I mean, it's fire effects. You yeah. gotta go with that stuff. <laughs> exactly. But the thing that's kind of cool is, uh, like, I know that like Brian uh, and and Nick put a lot of effort into making sure that there was some rationality about where you'll find things. Like, if you see an ambulance, you'll find what you think you'll find in an ambulance. Mm -hmm. And if you see, you know, a clinic or a restaurant or a you know a gun shop, like you're gonna find the stuff you expect to find there. And and they worked very hard to to make sure that it was. Uh, as reasonable and you know, it's not like a hundred percent predictable. It's not like you know absolutely the list that's going to be in there, but you can be pretty sure, and you can feel like you can make intelligent decisions and not just like you're rolling the dice all the time. Right. Uh, Hendo asked, "Did we increase the trunk sizes for State of Decay 2? I honestly don't even remember the comparison between the trunk sizes in the original and now. I think yeah. it went up to six. I think in the original. I and think so. I think it might go a little higher, uh, but it really varies widely from car to car. Yeah. Right. It's it's based on the size of the car, like it was in the first game. Yeah. So if you get a little sports car, you're not going to have a lot of space in there. But if you get like a, a minivan or a pickup truck or something like that, then, then you should have plenty. Can a friend administer the blood plague cure to me when I join their game? I believe so. 
I think so. You can definitely get cured while you're in the other person's game. Um, yeah, so it might actually be kind of fun to kind of run a hospital for your friends. Like, you make a bunch of play cure, <laughs> and they come and, and, and can take it. Uh, you can you have to drop off supplies. <laughs> yeah, you can administer it to yourself. So kind of no matter what, like, if as long as you can get your hands on it, which you can definitely do, you know, uh, uh, sharing things with each other and multiplayer, uh, you can, you can administer it. That's when you find out who your real friends are, is if they'll share their blood. Because it's not like it's, you know, it, that's that's also a challenge. Creating the blood, the blood plague here is a, is a challenge. Um, so, you know. You can only like, get it by fighting blood plague zombies. So. Right. Yeah, you can't just pick it up off the street. Well, I mean, you might be able to pick it up off the street, but it's not super duper easy. Like, you know, say, finding aspirin. This is, you know, part of the challenge. So you'll find out who your real friends are if they'll let you cure yourself or not in their games. Uh, Takuro Spirit asks, uh, one dude looked like he had screws in his pocket. What's up with that? Uh, I think we'll probably get into more depth about that when yes. we get into like base building and stuff. Um, in fact, somebody else asked, uh, are we going to see um, bases and how bases work in this gameplay? I don't think so. I think that, that I, IGN is really focused in this, game, in, in this particular video on combat, Fighting blood, uh, blood plague, uh, that sort of thing, and they didn't really get into base building. I think there's going to be videos later this month that are about that, so we'll definitely come back and talk about that stuff once we can, you know, once we've got something to look at together. Uh, I just got a new keyboard. Can you hear me typing furiously? Oh, totally. Yes. I kind of love that. It's a satisfying time, mechanical keyboard sound. Yeah. Yeah. At the same time, it sounds like I'm really angrily typing, right? So. Uh, oh. Watching Travis get tackled by a zombie. Oh, I know. I just saw that too. I'm like, oh. Pause. Pause. We had some, brain thought. We had some really great new combat animations going on here. Like Dude. the plague zombies. Like a lot of them are fast. They're like particularly virulent and, and scary. You can see them. Oh wow. <laughs> that explosion was great. Uh, you can see them really just swarming around these guys. I I yeah. felt like we were gonna see a TPK here when I was watching this combat, but eventually, you know, you get enough fire going and swing enough swords, you'll eventually take them all down. Right, but it's 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 very very frightening. I think that um, I think that one of the uh, one of the things that really stands out for me is that in the first game we had two like we really only just had two special zombies that um, that were scary, right? You know, uh, the, <laughs> the feral, feral and the juggernaut. Yeah, and it has changed. It is definitely changed in this game. There are a lot scarier things. I mean, ferals and juggernauts are still scary for sure, but uh, yeah. there's definitely a more danger element. Yeah, a crowd of... See, zombies are supposed to... You know, they, they are scary individually, but they're also meant to be scary in numbers. And when you get surrounded by a crowd of plague zombies and you know they're all hitting you, they're all infecting you, uh, all kind of at the same time... Oh God, it's terrifying. It can be absolutely terrifying, yeah. Because, you know, again, like each of these characters is unique. Even if you think you can get out of that combat, if you get infected, you don't really know if you're going to be able to survive long term. So Yeah, I mean, like you can see, we were fairly effective using a lot of consumables there, but uh, Brandon was still infected with blood plague just through that one fight. So it's, and d it's terrifying. F and Fogey is just completely exhausted right now. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he's taking yeah. a lot of damage. He runs through his own fire a couple times, though, so <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't help. <laughs> and poor Ryan is uh, is a death's door here too. You see everyone sort of animating differently and clutching their stomachs when they're infected. They're tired and they're they're damaged. I remember I ran I ended up running through my own fire, which was really stupid, but it killed me. And I was like, what what in the Sam Hill is this? And, uh, <laughs> stop, drop, and roll. Stop, right drop, and roll. Yeah, definitely. That, uh, that was my favorite tutorial tip. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it's like B button, drop, stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> No time to think about it. Yep. Yeah, you can just get so like in it. I but you know what? I think that it absolutely makes the permadeath uh, of this game way more meaningful, right? There are just <laughs> it has become the stakes have raised in State of Decay two. So Real Zombient uh, had a question about learning special attack. He points out that in the original State of Decay, you could unlock special attacks by uh, leveling your skills up, and we've seen Travis use some special attacks in this. So do you want to talk about like how you got access to the special attacks? Um, is that something we want to go into now, or uh, more when we go character development? Uh, let's let's talk about a little bit of it now. Just give a, give kind of a rough sense. Like, what, what, what was it that made your character able to do this thing that other people weren't? Um, so like played my character a decent amount, got some experience, and kind of working in that kind of one style of combat and that once you've done combat long enough you can sort of specialize into learning those 
new attacks. Um, and so that's how I'm able to kind of do that, like, tackle, flip over my shoulder thing. So a vanilla character, when you first start with them and they don't have any, like, advanced skills, moves like that aren't really in, in your wheelhouse. Like, you can't Correct. do them yet. But yeah. you can earn the right to do them, and certain characters will have different things available to them. Yeah, so, like, I think if you're watching, like, Ryan and I, I believe, have access to that, so you'll see us use it quite a bit, but the other two characters aren't. So there's definitely Would you say that it's similar to the uh, skill, like, the skill progression in the first game? Uh, like, it you know, is how you couldn't spin kick at first. You had to learn that as you as you increased your combat. Yeah, it is similar, and it and it gets it gets a little bit more complex than that original system. It's 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 there's more options, and it's kind of uh, there's more progression. It's kind of uh, uh, we, we kind of deepened it a little bit. Um, and you know, and Travis is right. There's probably gonna be a lot more of that we can talk about once we uh, once we have gameplay video that that really right. is doing a deep dive into the characters. But yeah, so 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 it is skill based. Different characters can specialize in different ways, and we'll and we'll get into the details of that uh, later on. But you have got the highlight, so you know, Woo, good job. Yeah. And real zombie, it seems like he's uh, happy with that answer. That you know that he kind of would feel a little surprised if uh, brand new recruits were able to do all of the fancy moves that uh, hardened veterans are able to do. Dunkusan crossplay, yes. Windows 10 uh, and Xbox can play the game together. Yep. And they're, t they're talking to Raymundo here. So, so look, these guys are actually going on a mission together right now. They're not just doing sort of uh, vanilla um, gameplay. Like the, like uh, the, you know, whoever's world. Was this your in your world? Yeah. So this was my kind of community with my map stuff. So uh, we basically had just moved bases recently. So it's very kind of chaotic with a lot of stuff on the map. So we're going through town, clearing stuff out, and then picking up uh, some missions along the way. So was that was that just like a side mission that you picked up as you were kind of mm -hmm. going? Yeah, so uh, I think it's still active right now. Um, yeah, we can't really see it because not only is my is, is your face covering it, but also your uh, uh, your name tag, the name tag from yeah. the IGN video, is also covering the mission UI. So yeah, we can't can actually see, see it in action. A little bit of orange on the side. <laughs> yeah, you, exactly. Yeah, so 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 some of that orange. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. Han Solo Dolo wants to know if there's any hint on the info to be revealed tomorrow. I don't think that anything's coming out tomorrow, right? Friday is the next IGN. Friday. Yeah, Friday. Uh, yes, repeal. I think they're they, they're spreading it out over the course of the month. So, so these first yep. two days they hit us hard, but then uh, we'll, we'll be waiting a little bit between. Uh, yep. Uh, from what I understand, Brandon's going to talk about more what he about what he experienced. Um, you know, his thoughts on play. He's going to get into a little bit more detail on uh, you know the tactics and whatnot. So that'll hit Friday probably nine o'clock the same time uh, okay. it did today, uh, nine o'clock a.m. Pacific time. So uh, definitely keep an eye out for that. And we will, of course, link it through all of our social channels. But I'm pretty sure that you won't see anything tomorrow. Uh, so Token Smurf is asking about um, references to uh, fans of the game uh, that, that might appear. I know I, I know of definitely a few Easter eggs uh, that are based on uh, players, uh, your players that we that we've known well over the past uh, several years. Brant uh, is probably the one who who probably knows what we've done uh, better than anyone. So at some point. Sometime, at some point, we'll need to do like sort of a, a tour of a map or something like that, and get Brant involved in that, uh, so that he can point out a few of those places. But I know, like for instance, um, I know specifically of a reference to P uh, PhD Peddler uh, that uh, that's that's in the game, and, and of course, at one point um, we were running a uh, like. Uh, uh, a community event where people were submitting their names uh, to be included on the uh, the name lists, uh, the nickname lists and stuff uh, in, in in our character generator, and, we, and, and a lot we'll of those are in there too. We also have a uh, one of our uh, costume contest winner. Uh, their costume went into the game. It's the skull hooded zombie. Oh, uh, you that's right. You might have seen. Yep, you might have seen that in a couple of screenshots from IGN. Um, but, we even have a couple. Like, we even have a player uh, with his face in the game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We cool. have a couple. We have a couple of players. They shaved. <laughs> Look. Oh, what have shaved his beard that had been growing for five beard. years? Yeah. Like in <laughs> Adamant or Adam. You know, I can't ever say this because I can't see things right. Adamantium also shaved off his beard that he he had been shaved forever. He's in as well as um. Uh, uh, hi <laughs> cadet. Hi cadet. And oh yeah, uh, hi cadet. Yep. And a couple of other players. So we've we. You know what? This game is a love letter to our players for sure. <laughs> um, and but we're not going to tell you about we're not going to tell you about the the secret sauce. You're going to have to go out there and find it, and then take screenshots of it so that you can show other players. That's kind of that's where the fun for me is is having you guys discover it for yourselves. 
Uh, so, yeah, Zombie Lord, I think we'll probably get more into the weapons and how they work um, a little bit later, but there are, there is a nice, I mean, one thing Brant said, pointed out yesterday, was that there are, were systems that allowed him to um, get a lot of, uh, a nice variety of weapons into the game, so we'll, we'll probably talk more, a little bit more about the weapons and how they work uh, later on. Uh, Insane Destroyer, we're not talking about bases or base building yet. Uh, that will come out later this month. IGN will have a feature on base building and those mechanics. So uh, we'll be able to share more of that later. Yeah. I know everybody wants to know everything right now. Yeah, I know. Datitude says still no beard technology in State of Decay 2. We, 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 we have to keep the, uh, the, the, our beard powers to ourselves in reality here in, uh, <laughs> in the lab. So, um, yeah, no, I, yeah, I, think, I think, you know, zombie, like, beards are, are, are good handholds for zombies. Like if a zombie's coming after my head, you know, to try to bite it, he can just grab you by the chin right here. It'd be really inconvenient. So you, you yeah, want to try would... to stay clean shaven and, and shorn haired in the, in the Actually, apocalypse. Actually, the reason that they had to shave off their beards was because we scanned their face and we needed a, <laughs> uh, the scanning, the scanning tools don't scan uh, facial hair very well. It doesn't have beards that way. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. So I believe that the beards that you'll see in game are hand painted on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're actually with 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 an eyebrow uh, pencil. Um, <laughs> little mustache. Uh, little twirly twirly eyebrow pencil mustaches. I like that. Uh, oh, we are oh. almost out of time. We're running. We're we're almost at the end of our stream. We've only got a couple minutes left. Full Fury asked the question: What are those coffin icons on the map? Um, should we go for it? Yeah, yeah. Go go ahead. Just like, I mean, the, it's. It's it's death locations, right? Yes. So it's players or locations where other characters in your community have passed away. So so this was your map that you were playing on. So you actually had some tragic stories, uh, yeah, backstories so going on. There, uh, people haven't gone back yet to like grab their stuff and put them to rest. Haven't done that yet. So that's still marked on the map for uh, where that all happened. Let's see here. Uh, oh, you know what? Listen, uh, Zarnathium, pre-order to on uh, Xbox Store, you get Yost in addition to. We are trying to find out right now when uh, you will actually receive your key for Yost. So uh, stay tuned for those details. Uh, Wonder is working on it. Um, and uh, we should have that information to you soon. We'll probably post it on Discord, Twitter, so on and so forth. Yes, you can see that uh, the, the little blue icon. It was, you know, your friend's uh, uh, loot box there. Yeah, you see that little blue uh, thing there. So yeah, so so that just in case because we kept talking about it when there was nothing on screen. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we were talking about. We said that each character has sort of their own. There we go, right there. Their own color coded um, uh, furniture that they can loot. So, Orentis so is good. impressed by our price. He says, "Oh, that's cheap." Uh, that is, yeah. No, you know what? Not uh, there's a lot of value added, right? So the first game it was inexpensive, and we built an incredible community um, because it was accessible, and we wanted to continue that trend. We're in it for the long haul, and we want you to be able to get into the game, and and continue playing with us. Yeah, I think the thing that you can sort of tell from that low price point is the fact that you know uh, I mean, Microsoft is taking this game as a fr as a franchise very seriously. You know, they want to build a large community and and continue to support this game and update it over time and, and, and nurture something that can last. Uh, this is you know they're they're not just trying to get as much cash as they can up front and then run. Like they're they're saying no, we're willing to make less money on it on the very first day so that we can you know, get more people involved, you know, it's like it basically extend this and make it last for a long time. I, th I think that that kind of commitment to fans is something you don't often see. And, uh, and I really appreciate it. It's fun oh, yeah, to be totally a part of a, a game that does this. Yep. Because we, I mean, we want to keep you guys around. Uh, we have had this wonderful, wonderful community for years. Um, so many of you have just, you know, have been playing the same game now, uh, since we launched and, uh, oh, I love that moment. That oh, so dude. Good. That is my favorite co-op. Back that up. Wait, back that up and show me. I was, yeah, so, I was yapping and I wasn't paying attention. That is just one of So I, I think I probably went back a little bit too far because this is a long video and I probably jumped too many. Uh, oh, it's like, free. But like there was, it's like one of the best things about, about co-op is the fact that sort of your friends can come in and surprise you. So this guy's getting attacked by a zombie right here and then boom. Oh, yes. <laughs> that is so he awesome. He just comes right by. It was great. That, that was you know, I also loved when he pointed out that they were all driving with all four doors open. Yes, exactly. Because that is, you know, what's you the best and easiest way to kill zombies in State of Decay? With your car. With your car door, yeah, exactly. 
So you can see like the left player, the right player, like everybody can open their doors and they can just sort of, they can sort of flap. I almost, like part of me almost wishes the cards would take off and just everyone flaps their doors at the same <laughs> yeah. time. That would be awesome. I can see like little music videos with people, <laughs> yeah. you know, opening their car doors to the beats, the different melodies. If that doesn't happen, I'm going to be so sad. Yeah, so Death Hour, yeah, you can get tired in other people's games. Like, all the bad things that can happen to you in your own game can also happen to you when you're a co-op player in somebody else's game. Um, and so you're going to have to deal with that. You, but you also, um, you know, you have access, just like your, your, the host uh, player has access to all of the characters in their community, you also have access to all the characters in your community when you're a co-op player. So if you need to switch out and grab somebody else because your current character's gotten too tired or injured, then you can. Um, and you can sort of, like, if you've been playing a bunch of co-op, uh, you can come back to your, to your game and be like, oh, man, all my characters... Ours is really oh tired. Let's, uh, so let's tired. recharge a little bit before we go and help anybody over. else. True Bulgarian wants to know if you can gift your key to somebody else but keep all of the bonus com- co- content. No. Uh, <laughs> all of that content is tied to that game key. So um, be a good friend and just, you know, give them that bonus content too. Um, oh, that is a really good question, Mercenary Man, and I think we are... I, I don't are, know if we're answering that question yet. Uh, I don't think we're answering it yet, but we will be talking more about multiplayer uh, specifics uh, yeah, later. Yeah, a little later on. But that is a really good question. Thank you for asking. Yeah. So, um, so people keep mentioning the name uh, Samaritans, and I don't remember where that popped up. Is that is that the name of the community or is that uh, one of the? It it's, might have been one of the, one of the enclaves. enclaves. Or, yeah, enclaves yeah. Names so or land of the yeah. Free oh, okay, the land of the free is that? Yeah, okay, yeah. So so uh, all of the enclaves and communities in the game have uh, we, we we have these like vast lists of potential names that they can select for themselves. Um, and so yeah, you'll see a bunch of different you know names of enclaves and communities and stuff because I mean one thing you know uh, each team sort of needs its own name so they can be consistent because you know as you as characters get killed off because anyone in this game can die as characters get killed off you know need to have sort of a consistent sense of who's who and so uh, groups in this in this world tend to sort of come up with names for themselves um, some of them kind of amusing. I think there was there was one for I don't know if we we might have removed the can of whoopass uh, <laughs> as one of the one of the names that a uh, community could have. Um, that, that was Isn't one of my favorites. Says, yeah, uh, prophecy one eighty seven wants to know where's Cletus. <laughs> well, uh, what, what what you'll need to see is you know once you drive over a fence or something, and then come back later. Uh, if that fence is still is back, then you know Cletus was there. That's how you. You can know tell. he made it. He made it into <laughs> uh, into fifteen months after after the uh, first strike. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, Takuro Spiria, we should we should definitely at some point, whether it's before or after release, do a vehicle focused stream where we get uh, like uh, Foggy and Dan Mode and, and you know folks here uh, and some programmers like folks here who have been involved with cars uh, to come in and talk about the way that the cars work because uh, absolutely it's cool good. yeah it's it, honestly like driving cars in this game it feels like I liked the cars in the original game I, I, I thought did they, too I thought they played really well and and, yep. and and handled really well but nothing compared to this game like the cars feel great in this game and really distinct as well like you know what car you're driving by how they, it feels. yeah yeah they oh that's are. absolutely true yeah uh well and uh the physics engine is ab- different right so uh so they're gonna they're gonna feel different they're gonna act differently yeah uh, I, I feel kind of bad for Montprince because he's probably gonna have to find an entirely different exploit to get cars on top of roofs right uh, probably <laughs> absolutely gonna have to try something else i don't know i've well, asked i've asked the developers to, the to lay game. traps on roofs <laughs> So that that doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. Uh, so we got about three minutes left. If there's any yeah. last questions people have, any or any last like anything we Perfect. missed from this video that uh, that well, we should have fo- focused on that we uh, that we um, got past. One thing maybe to highlight, like I think it was in the gameplay twice, uh, but Ryan dying from blood plague was kind of interesting. Oh, that's right. Like, if you have blood plague, taking out a play cart, not the best thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Because because basically because because you take like as you're taking uh, like like the, the same like damage from these plague zombies that infects you originally it also hastens your death after you've been infected. So while he had some more time when he went in, he got kind of tackled and attacked by a couple plague zombies. And you get to see what a player character plague zombie looks like after that. So you have to yeah. So so definitely when you go back and review this video later, guys, you should definitely pay attention to those moments because you get to see it happen live. 
Uh, Samurai, yeah, absolutely. Samurai, she asks, when's the next stream? Uh, well, we're definitely going to do Backseat Driver next week. Um, I don't know if we're going to do another stream in between, uh, you know, maybe based on, you know, what, what IGN releases. We'll have to, I'll start to wonder about that. We'll find out what, what our options are. Because uh, we, we'd like to be able to stream as much as we can, but, you know, we also have a game to finish, too. So we'll, right, absolutely. We'll definitely right next balance. Wednesday, for sure. But yeah, next Wednesday, at the absolute minimum, we'll definitely be there. So... Um, I did just p post a link uh, for the pre-order details. So uh, those links are the, there are no links to the retailers there. You'll have to Google them or you know type that out. Uh, we were waiting for all of the retailers to update all of their information because uh, yesterday stuff was still kind of awry. So, but everything that you can get from each retailer is, is on the link that I just shared. Cool. Okay, um, that's and then uh, Insane Destroyer asks, can you kick people who are trolling in your game? I believe the host has control over who's in their game and who's not. So that, yeah, so they can they can make decisions like that. I think that's an Xbox standard, isn't it? When yeah. you're hosting a game, you have the ability to kick people out. Yeah, you shouldn't be trapped with, with people that are being jerks. Yep. Um, Death Hour uh, was asking, is, uh, asking which map we were in. And I actually was not paying attention to that. Uh, do you remember? Don't I don't think that we've told people what the names tell, of the maps you know? are yet. So <laughs> we're not going to say. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that, that, that totally works. Spoiler alert. No. Or spoilers. Spoilers. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess I guess that's probably it. Unless, uh, you know. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I guess we're just going to have to awkwardly sign off or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I've, I've actually worked pretty hard on this. Uh, we've, got, we've got a way to non-awkwardly sign off. Want to see this? Take this that's out. That's just crazy. What? Whoa, oh my god! You got a goodbye screen. That's not even. Look at this. I mean, we can still be awkward about it by talking through it and then cutting right. ourselves off at a weird time. Right. Uh, That's kind of part of the charm, though, is our awkward sign up. Well, for Bexy Driver, we awkwardly sign in because you know we're always having some weird kind of conversation. So, yeah, kind of like the beginning of uh, I don't know. I don't know if you watch uh, movie fights, Screen Junkies movie fights, but they always yeah. pretend they were having a winter, an interesting conversation right at the beginning of the video. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, think if. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, you are an amazing community. And before we go, tell me, how excited are you for this game? And then let's wait for 30 seconds while they answer. While they answer, right. Uh, you know what? I should have given something away. Next week. Next week. Next, give next away week free stuff. Away. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you guys later. <laughs> Thanks. You, Thanks to Jeffrey. Thanks, everybody. And yeah. Travis Thank you, for Travis, joining so us much today. for, for yeah, being here to give us a tour. <laughs> see you later.